Okay, thank you for the opportunity for presentation. The case I'm going to present is the uh, interesting case we had in Memorial Hermann Hospital in Houston, Texas. So basically, it's a 49-year-old man with past medical history of type A aortic dissection repair with mechanical aortic valve uh, replacement in 2006, history of AFib. He had a PVI ablation in 2010, had again recurrence of the, recurrence of the AFib. DC cardioversion, and again recurrence, and again redo ablation in 2012. Presented for, in the hospital, actually just for outpatient stress tests. A few minutes after a stress test started, patient had chest pain, a still elevation in AVR, and diffuse ST depression. Patient went to VFib arrest, CPR was started, code blue activated, patient was brought to uh, uh, cardiac cath lab. Uh, so while they, we are doing actually, we were doing CPR, we were prepping patient, decision was made to place VA ECMO because by that time it was almost uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes refractory VFib. So we put a 15 French arterial cannula and 22 French venous uh, cannula for ECMO and then uh, we started doing the angiogram. Initially, we started with different guides actually, XB, XBLAD, EBU, and we were not able to engage at all and see anything. So we decided to put a pigtail catheter and see what's going on. And this is what we saw actually <clears throat> with a pigtail catheter. So at that time I was lucky because I saw one patient in my fellowship like that it is basically a uh, cabral graft, which is uh, at this time um, the standard procedures, surgery for a uh, type dissection is bental, modified bental with button technique, but it used and a surgeon used to do the cabral clap, and what they do actually, they connect both coronary ostium with a tube graft to the aorta. The next two slides is not for this patient. I just put a normal one to just give you an uh, idea of how it should look like. So basically, as you see, there are two tube grafts from the aorta connected to the coronary ostium. It gives a tension-free, um, actually, anastomosis. And again, this is not for this patient. Uh, this is the, how it should look on the left uh, cabral graft, and for the next one also is not for this patient, is how it should look for the right side. So we go back to our patient. So here is our, our patient. As you see, the challenging part is that we need to do intervention through the graft. So what we do, we put the O35 wire uh, close to the uh, left main uh, ostium, and we put a guide liner over that, and then over guide liner, we were able to advance a multi-purpose guide. Basically, using this telescope technique, we were able to go through the graph to the coronary and to the left main osteo. <clears throat> and then after that, if you, uh, as you see, there are almost a very tight uh, area in the osteo left main, and that's usually the most common location of the uh, stenosis in these patients. So then we put a wire in the circumflex, and as you see here, there is a, uh, in the graph, there is a filling defect concerning for actual thrombus inside the uh, left side of carbal graft. And we put another wire into the LAD, and then um, at this time we balloon the, as, as you see, patient is still in VFib on ECMO. And uh, we put actually, uh, balloon and this is the stent and this is after the stent actually we placed that and at this time we had two coronary wires so we had a better support we were able to walk back a little bit the guide and take a picture from uh, uh, graph and, and we did the two runs of the export catheter to uh, actually suck the clot that we had as much as we could and here is the final picture after a stent. And at this time, after revascularization, we shot the patient again, and then patient actually converted to the sinus rhythm. <laughs> and by this, time, by this time, it's almost, I would say, 50 minutes, uh, 45 to 50 minutes, patient was in VFI from the time he was in the stress test lab. So, um, and this is the final picture after the export. There is still some thrombus inside the uh, graft. And then we look at the valve, make sure the valve is OK. And uh, hospital, of course, actually day one patient under, uh, went under hypothermia protocol, intubated on low dose pressor on ECMO. We started CRRT because of um, AKI. Day two, he was awake, responsive, was 
partially follow command, still intubated. We were able to win her off press or day three, still intubated on CRRT, but pressor were off, better neurologic recovery, and following command fully on day three. Day four, he was off CRRT, kidney function recovered, hemodynamically he was stable, achemotic cannulation was performed on day four, and day five extubated, full neural recovery. Day six, we started cardiac rehab, EF was 25, we started on medication, and day seven, discharge. On three month follow up, he was doing okay, fine. he eventually received the AICD because of low EF, and six month follow up, he's doing great on uh, current medical management. I have two just slides showing how the cap there are different types of the caparol graft. Uh, basically, as I explained, it's coming from the osteum to the um, um, actually aortic graft. Um, could be one direct anastomosis of the right side to the aorta and the left side go to the right sided graft. There are different modifications. That was the first actually publication, first case that they did through the caparol graft in 2005 after I had case. I had to search and I found this one and this, this was exactly the same as our case, uh, Leifman osteum and they did a similar approach and uh, one of the complication is actually leak as you can see in the CT scan and the treatment is the cover, the stand and the CT that you need, that there is no more um, actually leakage. I think the main thing on this case was the placement uh, early of VA ECMO for refractory VFib and challenging um, intervention through the capital graft.